All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another very special episode of Undefined. I am here with some friends from Down Under in Australia. I have Lizzie and Murray from the Soul Movers, and you might recognize Murray because he is the Red Wiggle. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> Our pleasure. We're doing great. Thank Thanks. you, Bella. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the band. How did you guys came to be? To my research, you were already, was you had the Soul Movers, it was already its own thing. And then Murray, you joined uh, a few years back. How did that all come together? What was it, 2013 maybe? Knocked on the door. Hello, do you need a new guitarist? <laughs> <laughs> It was a bit like that. Go on, you do the talking. Oh, uh, well, Lizzie had, did have a, an earlier version of the band with um, with a, a quite famous guitar player in Australia. An uh, American guy, actually, yeah. called Dennis Tech. He was from Ann Arbor in Michigan. And he had wow. a, a band called, he had a band in the 70s who were very influential called Radio Birdman. Some of your listeners, older listeners might know, know of them. Well, sometimes the young crate diggers find MC5 Stooges, Radio Birdman with those guys. So, um, yeah, so they had a band together and then... Um, uh, their relationship broke up and so the band broke up and I came along a, a few years later and and, um, and I said to Lizzie, um, I, I heard their first album and I really loved it and I, I said to Lizzie, do, do you need someone to play with? And uh, I was looking for a band after I left the, the, the Wiggles. He's other little band called the Wiggles. And, um, uh, <laughs> Small independent yeah, band. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we got together and, and uh, we've recorded four albums together. And, and, Ten years, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's been a, yeah, a, a, okay, it's fun. Your fourth album just came out a couple months ago. Tell us a little bit about that. How is the creative process like for recording the album? It's called Dumb Luck, right? Yeah, and um, Dumb Luck for that very reason. It just sort of made itself, you know, how sometimes good ideas sort of just form, you know. So we've, so got, we've got a really great lineup um, of the band at the moment that, who are not new but new-ish, and we, we just really did it collaboratively collaboratively <laughs> that's a hard word Do you like um, licorice <laughs> and um uh yeah so lizzie and i write the songs and and um but you know they had some input and we just really developed them together with the band and and uh, it was just really organic and um, we just loved working like that and it's um um, yeah, so it's just, it, and we recorded some of it in Sydney, just at a little um, rehearsal studio, really, just then, fairly, yeah. um, and then Lizzie took um, the, the the tapes, well, not the tapes, the, the files these days. Back on the road. Uh, over to the US and uh, worked with some uh, musicians and singers that we worked with uh, on our album a, a few years ago called Bonafide, which we recorded in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Yeah. I was going to ask about that, actually. That was on my uh, list because I was researching and you went to a bunch of different studios you did in Memphis, which is not yeah. far from me at all. Muscle Shoals, that's not far from me. Uh, how was that yeah, like? I've, I've wanted it. to go to, to the Muscle Shoals studio so we'll bad. Do that. We'll do that one day, Bella, because I know all <laughs> those guys now. I can walk in the car park with Muscle Shoals and David Hood sings out. Hey, Lizzie, David, like Hood, yeah, yeah. I'm a big uh, fan I'm of, uh, I'm a big Jason Isbell drive-by truckers fan oh uh, yeah 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 me too yeah well, well it's funny because david because david played on all these amazing records from the 60s and 70s uh -huh. uh, including aretha franklin wilson pickett then later on yep. um, with uh, rod stewart and and um bob seger and so and so you know he's he's been quite well known in musical circles for a long oh, time yeah. now, now he's best known as patterson hood from drive by trucker's son so, uh, dad yeah, dad, yeah. <laughs> so that he, he he's quite proud of you that so it's fine yes <laughs> I, I actually came back to muscle shoals for this album too because when you're on a good thing you know some mm -hmm. of those hickory herbs and flavors go really really well with our music and it just you know i called it putting the bling on but when you can use the shoal sisters as backing vocalists and mm -hmm. in royal Street in memphis our green studios i use the same gospel singers on stand in your power and songs like that um free real world um I couldn't do it without them you know it's like making yeah. music is collaborative and when you know and you've had the best and really they're the best in the world you know mm -hmm. um very hard to drop down to yeah I know a girl who lives in you know Byron or whatever and and she might be available I'm like not nah, just get on a plane do it properly so I have driven the entire length of the state of Mississippi wow. right down to I called it the Mexican Gulch, um, down to the coast, the south coast, because um, David actually told me there was a beach down there. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to keep driving until I hit the beach. <laughs> so I have um, I have spent some good time in, in Alabama. Your... And yeah, I, I loved it. Well, I was an English teacher, so I taught, you know, a lot of texts that were based around oh, wow. the south. 
Yeah, and um, I always found it fascinating. You know, Boo Radley is an amazing character. Put it yeah. That way. yeah, yeah, he really sparks my imagination. And of course, I've spent a lot of time in the US over over many many years yeah. touring with the Wiggles. So, um, I you know, I love it. I love the South. I love yeah. The Tennessee. There's so much to love, and a lot of it is the people, you know, because there's mm -hmm. so much warmth, and and the especially with within musicians' um, supportive communities are just amazing. Like, I walked back into one of the places that are a, a regular gig in Florence, and it was seriously like yesterday. But I was it was two and a half years down the track, and they recognized me as I walked in the door from the stage. I'm like, hey, Lizzie, like this. I'm like. God. You know, this is just for some context. Lizzie is six foot two, so yeah. she, <laughs> she does stand out as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but the point is that yeah, they do remember you, and, and yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, affection and, yeah. and camarad camaraderie yeah. amongst musicians around that that area. Yeah. Yeah, so we could talk was, about that for half an hour. Yeah, when I was reading about that, I was like, that's so crazy because that's so close to me. And I, I keep telling my friends, I'm like, I want to go to like Fame Studios and I want to tour all those places. We'll do that. It's great to do that. Yeah. I did those yeah. tours again when I went back in, you know, end of June or whenever it was, just because you can't get enough of that. You know, just sit at that piano where Aretha Franklin wrote Never Loved a Man. It's there. And uh, it just, the thrill is phenomenal. You know, there's the first time, but the second time's pretty damn good. The third time's excellent. So I'll just keep going back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I love that too, because that's probably a long trip. And the fact that you've done that multiple times, that's awesome. You just oh, got yeah. to get on the plane and then from it's, there... You it's just... a funny thing because Americans do feel that like coming to Australia, for instance, is, is a long way, but Australia is so far from nearly anything. We're used that, to it. That mm -hmm. we, we don't think anything of like a 24-hour flight, really. I mean, well, it's I do. Yeah. But, well, but, you know, only, you do it. I've it, done it lots We times, say so. only 13 hours to LA yeah, from yeah, Sydney. Yeah. Sydney down, but, uh, yeah. It's worth it. Definitely, yeah, it's short. Um, I want to talk about more about the soul mover. So you definitely take a lot of kind of rock soul music. Um, how, what kind of what music when coming up with this new album specifically, but just in general, do you kind of try to take after when creating this uh, music for the band? Well, it's interesting because we're called the soul movers, so people think it's going to be just soul, but we we haven't limited mm -hmm. it ourselves to that. The the idea is more about moving people's souls with yeah. music, yeah, um, minds and bodies, and so um. And so we, we don't limit ourselves. So there's all sorts of different music on here. I mean, there's, you can hear the Rolling Stones influences, which is a big one for me growing up. in the, I grew up in the 60s, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Beatles and stuff, big for me. But, you know, all through the 70s music, um, uh, there's, there is a lot of soul there. There's some sort of stuff that sounds a bit like the B-52s from you yep. know, later. Yeah, I could hear that. Late 70s and early 80s. And um, I guess it's the music we've grown up with. We, we really, uh, and all fairly organic music. So it's all played on instruments. We don't mm -hmm. do too much. Um, well, we don't do any kind of, you know, sequencing or or computer stuff really. Yeah. Other, yeah. No, it's the real deal. I think the relationship, and obviously after four albums, I'm starting to really work out why we work together mm -hmm. um, so well. Murray and I have been collaborators on about 100 songs, 110 songs wow. now maybe. So at first we just enjoyed the collaboration, but now, as you go on, I think you learn to respect how and why it works. Mm -hmm. So way the song comes about is usually I have a kooky idea which is triggered about something in the environment or something's happening in the world and it just pops out you know so I record it into my trusty little iPhone and it's a voice you know memo at first and then by the time I get down the beach because I usually try to do it while I'm walking it's like 15 minutes either way I'm I'm vibing a certain feel and really most musicians write from the music they love because it's in your DNA as a child mm -hmm. It's basically what was put in and you know we got lucky because we grew up in an era where music was really freaking cool and lots mm -hmm. of ideas were coming through so we might have Buddy Holly and Elvis but we've got Led Zeppelin we got ABBA you know we've got yeah. some of the great groovy sounds of the center psychedelic 60s you know Linda Ronstadt all those amazing voices that are well-constructed songs with incredible artists wrapped around them so for me um, I come up with the idea and then I start hassling Murray. Hey, what you doing? And hey, shall I drop around? How about getting that guitar out? You know, and he, I think, is is more of a constructor. So he will put finishes and tastes and guitar licks. And he'll know from his amazing collection of guitars what he wants to use on it. So he'll build mm -hmm. with the tool like the carpenter. I'm the crazy ideas person. So that collaboration works really well because once he starts building the idea snowballs and then it really just takes its own shape yeah so like yeah. for example 
trucks on a highway. I think mm-hmm. I sent you the clip today. Yes. I just got quite frustrated because I'm like, I love trucks. I'm a Mack truck girl. I can't stop looking at them. I love them. I don't know why. <laughs> um, maybe it was growing up in an isolated area and I used to love going out to the highway and just watching them go past because they represent going to another place, freedom, you know, expansion, horizons, possibilities, you know. And so I'll go out there and then this idea of trucks on the highway know which way to go, like life, you know, who knows mm-hmm. which way to go. The trucks know the way to go, follow the trucks, you know. So I got frustrated one day and I picked up my guitar and I can't play it. And I'm just going, nee, 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 like this, this frustrated little tone. But there was something about just the frustration of that, that when Murray caught it, he was like, okie dokie, we won't be playing it in E minor, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and we find, you know, we find a place for not only the idea, but the vibe that I was putting into it as well. So Yeah, I think because we know each other so well especially creatively you know mm-hmm. Lizzie can come up with something and I'll, I'll say oh that sounds like this, you know this kind of song or yeah. this kind of thing and, He's a and, from, and, and, yeah. and then you know from that yeah. I'll work out what you know things like what key it's in and then it, it could go here like why don't we try this and then that'll affect the melody that, that, that we're using and um and and that kind of thing so um yeah so it's probably ninety percent of the time Lizzie has an idea first, and then then we take it from there. Like every now and then, I'll be just sitting there strumming guitar, and Lizzie goes, "What's that?" And I said, "I don't know, just some chords." And she goes, "I'll sing over that." So, but but mostly it's the other way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's the best. And um, another question I wanted to ask regarding the band. So there is, I think. A similarity, I think, between the Wiggles and the Soul Movers is because you guys also have a lot of like big, uh, like fun music videos as well. How do you come up with ideas for that? The trucks one, and then I also saw the one that you guys did with the OG Wiggles, where you were to work out outfits, the circles, oh, circles baby one. Baby. Yeah. yeah. Well, most most of the visual kind of things are, are Lizzie. Yeah, that's that's kind of it. Um, but the yeah, the thing with with Circles Baby, uh, it, it was an idea that get the her. boys back together. Because yeah. Greg Greg was well again by then because mm-hmm. we were on stage when the horrible time happened with mm-hmm. the Bush um, Fire fundraiser concert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a pretty tragic night, and I was the last person to talk to Greg. We were talking about Elvis because I'd just gotten back from recording that album, and and he's a mad music oh, fan. Yeah. So we- he got told off just before he put went on stage. He's like, you're making him late. I'm like, ah, sorry, you know, went on stage. And then that happened because we supported them that night. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we, we um, Murray went and visited Greg and I sort of reached out to him because no one likes to be feel, feel like, you know, something terrible happened and Australia's heart nearly broke and, mm-hmm. and then they're sort of out there and stranded. So I reached out to him through Murray and said, hey, how are you feeling? Are you ready to? have a bit of a dance and you'll find that video on socials actually because I yep. I said go down and look at some disco clothes in the Wiggles wardrobe which is rather large as you can imagine <laughs> and that's where it got fun you know and you could see Greg getting really excited again because you know it's been his whole life and he was he was he was born to wiggle and um <laughs> born to run born to wiggle and um and really that's when we knew that the OGs would be back together again and, and kind of really was the beginning of the the, the reunion. So that's the awesome. Baby was the first time they've been back together again for a long time, you know. So I think it it put the magic back in their socks and off they went. So that was our little involvement in it. But yeah, it was super fun. I would re- really recommend it if you're feeling sluggish one day, chuck on the yes. baby. I dare you to stay sitting Get on down. YouTube. I dare you to stay sitting <laughs> Yeah, and then the behind there's a behind the scenes video, I think, too, that I watched. It was really cute. That has them all in their uh, yeah, workout yeah, outfits workout. and yeah. having a good time. And yeah. That's right. Richard Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is surprising that the Wiggles honestly didn't do like a workout theme music video. That would have fit perfectly. I thought it was a good idea. Yeah, they still might do that. Bit of Jane Fonda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the well, 80s outfits. John, who's in the Wiggles now, is is like very fit and buff, and so mm-hmm. yeah, probably that's on you, the card. You see, you see that in the yeah. hot potato, um, you know, the Amazon doco, yeah. um, Amazon Prime doco. You'll see him do some incredible things. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a TikTok yeah. sensation. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, the kids my age, even like I was sitting at lunch with some friends and they were like, did you see the new Purple Wiggle? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hot! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It just continues to be relevant all these years later. Well, um, also wanted to kind of tying the two things together, Murray, how is it like transitioning from uh, touring 
playing for kids and then going into an adult group? Because I know, I feel like kids are probably a harder audience to please because you have to work us on crafting, focusing their attention where they're adults. It's a little bit different because they'll come to a gig. Do you agree or disagree? How is that like no, for I you? Guess, well, I guess it, it could seem like that. Um, I guess because of our, our training and well, just our years of experience, but really our training in early childhood education, we knew how to, to, how to sort of hold the audience fairly well. Mm -hmm. And the, the great thing about kids is um, if they like it, they, they're into it straight away. They'll start dancing, mm -hmm. whereas adults, you've got to kind of coax them a bit, and which Lizzie's getting good at getting them, what he's good at, getting the, the audience to come a bit closer mm -hmm. to the stage. You know, everyone wants to stand back and just be a bit cool. Um, uh, so th th there are, in some ways, the kid audience is more difficult, but in some ways it's more it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, my, my background, I, I was in bands before the Wiggles, and mm -hmm. so I'm kind of used used to that as that world as well so it wasn't really that different but what was what's good about it in the soul movies is that I do use the skills that I developed with the wiggles um you know we we interact with the audience we, we don't just stand up there and play the songs we talk to them we get them to join in there's you know parts where I go into the audience like I used to with the wiggles and <laughs> encourage them to do the actions and sing along it's you know it's not a kid's show it's an adult show but you know um, I think we're probably a blend of the OG wiggles show where they love to just really you know Murray's so idolized and he's a kid a nostalgic key to the past where life mm -hmm. was just full of joy and you know and things were easier and, and better because you don't have to make such big decisions for yourself so they lock into Murray at first sometimes and then I'm like they're like who's that crazy tall girl that's shouting at <laughs> trying to block me out but impossible but um you know like the other day we did a festival was old bar and, and Murray had his wireless guitar on that day and uh, he went out and did his preach man thing for Lift Me Up. And then he came back on stage and I said, get your guitar and go out there. And that just blew their tiny minds, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like <laughs> that that feeling of new music, old music, new Murray, old Murray, OG Wiggle Murray, but also rock and band Murray. Hey, enough of the old Murray bit. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> um, yeah. I think we do have that combination of, uh, I guess, some um, retro sounding songs you know, from the 60s and 70s, 80s, and then someone who, for them, was such a big part of their childhood, and then just a heap of fun, you know, mm -hmm. and the idea is just to keep them really entertained, and, you know, we're both teachers, I'm high school, he's early childhood, so he'll say, give yourself a big clap, like, both thinking, ends of the spectrum. I, yeah. You know, I, I always shows that are entertaining, with the, you know, the, a lot of bands will just stand there and play, and that's fine, that's, you know, mm -hmm. I, there's lots of bands who do that yeah. and, and they don't interact much with the audience and it's just about the music but for us it's a, it's about the entertainment as, as much as the music the music obviously is of prime importance yeah. but yeah. but you know you want to draw the audience in and, and feel like they're part of it too yeah. it's not just a band on stage and the, you're the audience you want them to, you want to sort of draw them in and, yeah. and so I think that's one of the things that we've got good at doing yeah I think at the end of most shows we say now you're part of the soul movers family Aww. and it does feel like they've been inducted into the right now we've got you we're not letting you go like this. <laughs> and they love it you know because it's like joining a club based on the fact that you love these sounds and you love to feel this way and you love to be part of a community I love as this kind of shows too like I, I go to a ton of concerts so the the way where you can you know entertain but then also get that audience interaction those are always your best kind of experiences for sure <laughs> We're on the same page there, Bella. Yeah. Awesome. Well, do you mind if I ask some questions about the Wiggles? Because I, I definitely well, want to go well, those down. And I'm going to go like this because <laughs> there you go. Feel Let free to chime in. Yeah. And you've got, now you've got a two camera shoot. <laughs> yeah. Man. Um, so um, a big thing about um, the Wiggles was, of course, like the songs and then the videotapes about the songs where you guys just kind of sang and dance. But I think my favorite part of it was the movies and television shows that you guys did. What was the decision to take? Like, OK, we're a band and we're going to have the videos of us like singing, because I feel like singing videos for children were very common around that time. But we made the decision, OK, we're going to like kind of have like we're going to become almost like characters and we're going to have our own show and we're going to go on these silly adventures in the movies. How did that come about for you guys? Well, I think a lot of it came from um, our our youth, our childhood, because uh, you probably know the band, the monkeys, the, yes. the monkeys, the monkeys actually were for, like manufactured for a television show. Um, they had had a TV show. I don't know if you've seen it, but I we have. kind of, yeah, yeah I had a DVD as a kid. Yeah, so so you know, I was in my sort of 
probably about seven or eight when that came out. And I, that that's actually my first exposure to kind of rock and roll music. And I just, you know, I was just um, just blown away by it and it became my, my passion. Uh, and from there I got into the Beatles and stuff. But, you know, the kind of zaniness of, of, of that and the end of the Beatles' Hard Day's Night and, and that that sort of thing, I think that inspired us. And um, I think with, just with the Wiggles, we always, um, we'd have these ideas and we'd just follow them and see how they go, where they take us. And, you know, we we never really planned too far ahead. Mm-hmm. Anthony had lots of great ideas, still does. And some of them were crazy and some of them, well, some of them were crazy and we did them anyway. Some of them were too crazy and we didn't do them. But, um, you know, that's just the way way we went. And, uh, you know, none of us were actors. and But, you know, I think we were genuine about what we did and, and it connected with the audience. Yeah, I actually, uh, over the summer, I went back and I watched some of the the original, I think, first series is on YouTube. Even as an adult, like, I was cracking up. There were so many like little silly episodes. I think there was one episode where you had lost your shirt or you had a change and you weren't oh, yeah. wearing your red shirt and nobody, they all acted like they didn't know who you were. Like just simple, silly stuff. Like, of course, it's aimed at kids, but it's something that I feel like everybody can kind of like watch and, and laugh at and, and the yeah. act is great. Yeah, I think that I think a lot of people respond to that. I think that series was written by um, a guy called Greg Truman, who who actually lives in New York. He's an Australian, but um, he's Anthony's cousin, and he's a writer. And and, um, and so we worked pretty closely with him. But, you know, he, so we had some input from him. And and uh, but you know, we were all on the same page. We knew what we were trying to do. And I think sometimes those just the innocence of those silly ideas works really well. For, for adults as well as children. Yeah, I, I another one that I rewatched was the the cold spaghetti western, where it was the oh. it was a cowboy movie, but it was all about pasta and the winner of the pasta competition. It was just like olive oil and the spaghetti. Yeah, 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 pretty nutty stuff. <laughs> yeah, who who read that? Did you guys kind of come up like, okay, this is what we're doing the video about, or did somebody kind of pitch you the idea of like, okay, this one you guys are going to space, but your cartoons or yeah, I like, can't did... remember now. A lot of that stuff came from us, and then sometimes mm-hmm. we get a writer in to actually write the script. But you know, a lot of the ideas came from us, um, and sometimes they're based around some of the songs we might have had. Although usually we wrote the songs to go with the, the concept. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's true. I, I can't remember a lot of that stuff. You know, it's a long time ago. But also mm-hmm. um, the way we work because we're we're so collaborative. Um, mm-hmm. It's just ideas are quite often tossed around and you forget where they came from. I can't remember actually with that one who, who actually wrote the script. That might have been Greg as well, Greg Truman, the Anthony's yeah. cousin. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Though. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, you were able to do just like so many things, um, shows and, and, and concerts and television shows. I'm sure your schedule back then was just so stacked. Some things just kind of blended together. It was insane. And that's part of the reason why at the end of 2012, I... I hung up my my skivvy we call it the red my red shirt yeah. um uh it, it was just I loved it it was so great but I just I needed a break and um uh yeah because it was insane we we toured like we had to fit in all those videos and things in between our touring because our touring's always been the, the sort of cornerstone of what we did uh, mm-hmm. and we'd be touring 10, 10 months of the year sometimes so then you'd be like oh we've got two weeks here we can do something <laughs> or yeah. you know we'd be and fortunately, um, probably after maybe um, ten years or so of the Wiggles, we we actually got our own recording and and video studio, or TV studio. We we um, because we were just um, using so much, and that that kind of worked really well. Because if we're we were off, we could just get into the studio. We could do some stuff, then do some filming, and um, yeah, that was quite good. But yeah, it was in, it was insane. <laughs> so the yeah. song movies is great. We still, we still do a bit of touring, but. Um, probably no one in Australia sort of is like like the Wiggles still do. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, for people that are unaware, I think back in uh, the '90s or even longer than that, you guys played like what 500 shows a year because you played multiple yeah. shows a day. That's right, we did three or four shows a day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah and that's first, not even. Yeah, you know, it's, it's insane. all over the world. Yeah, and and the aerobics too. I think Greg worked out at the end of 2012 that we played 7,000 shows, which, which was pretty, yeah, was pretty amazing. <laughs> that is insane. That is so crazy. And it's not just like, you know, like you're just sitting there and like playing your instruments and like having the kids with you. You're com- like on the like dancing, singing, running around. 
Um, when I was watching some of the old TV shows, there was a, a clip of you guys, you were singing like a medley of all your songs, but I was just watching it like this because you guys were like running around the stage at like two minutes, like all the greatest hits, like dancing. And I was like, I could, there's no way I would feel like I'm going to pass out after trying to do that. Yeah, well, it was some, yeah, we didn't need to go to the gym back then. <laughs> the shows kept us pretty fit. Yeah, no, it was, it was, I loved that part of it too, because it just meant, you know, we were active the whole time. Um, it was just, it was lots of fun. That That's mostly what I remember about the Wiggles and joy. It's, it was about, to us, the, the or to me particularly, I think that my main thing that I'm proud of is we spread joy. We made, and, and that's kind of coming back now with these shows that we've, we've done. Last year we did an arena tour in Australia um, playing to 20-somethings and we played mm -hmm. it totally straight. We had a band and everything, so it was a bit bit bigger production maybe than the Wiggles shows we used to do, uh, although they were pretty big too. Yeah. Um, and we played to uh, arenas to like late late teens, you know, people up to their early 30s who grew up with the Wiggles and it was that thing where they just, they were reliving their childhood. They just wanted us to play as if, you know, they were a bunch of kids. I yeah. mean, we all, both sides knew that it was kind of pretty bizarre, but uh, it was just, that was just so so joyous and loud because they, they all sang every song. My daughter, who's 29, said, the thing I love about going to those shows is that, that I know every song. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just great. It's so sweet. I've got Bella. I'm going to ask my own question now. Do you reckon yeah. that you could do that show again? Because you know what? I think it would be really interesting if the uh, Wiggles, the OG Wiggles, went back to the States next year, for for example, because um, everyone's talking about that record, right, at uh, Madison Square Gardens. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon you'd be able to do that at, your, <laughs> at you guys' age? And, uh, look, I'm not saying that word that you told me not to mention, but <laughs> is it possible? Like, are you doing matinee and night time shows at madison square gardens yeah yeah we're doing two shows a day yeah two shows a day for yeah. how many days in a row uh, tw was it 12 yeah. 12 days wow yeah, so, um, yeah that look I, I don't i don't think we'll ever i don't think the og wiggles will ever go back to doing more than no. one show a day um but you know and and we've scaled scaled back what we do the, you know the, mm -hmm. the um that uh thing you were talking about the medley of songs um we don't do that sort of stuff anymore. <laughs> but you know, like, like I'm doing some DJing in Australia. I, I was going like to ask a, about that. A yeah. yeah, and um, it's an, I do an, just an hour set, but I'm I'm jumping around dancing it's the a whole workout. time. Yeah. And, uh, I'm 63 years old. I'm, I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> but I, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could do that uh, uh, that medley again. <laughs> I think I think to be honest, I think he's the fittest and healthiest he's been in the 10 years I've known him. You know, oh. and I think um back at the gym and uh, I think it was seeing an old video of Musley Murray that set him off <laughs> but I went "Ooh, I'm you you remember that, like that again yeah I was like that Murray. was an episode too yeah is that your inspiration yeah, Musley Murray. Well, yeah. yeah he's down you're with three. we were yeah. talking about John you were the original big strong John you, got, <laughs> you set yeah. the example but yeah, maybe, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I had a, a muscle suit on. He's just muscly. I know he's got a muscle suit. <laughs> but I, I was thinking, Bella, I was, do you think, um, given the passion for the OG Wiggles reunion shows, do you think they could sell out 13 shows at Madison Square Gardens and blow the roof off their uh, previous record? I think, I the think they could. Is, yeah. I, I just I just think you guys should come to the US. <laughs> yeah, look, we, we, are, we are looking at the, the trouble with, Doing the OG stuff it, um, is that Anthony's still really busy with the current mm -hmm. Wiggles, and they, they tour pretty much constantly. But you know, he loves it. He loves touring, and and he's you know keen to do some some um, OG yeah. shows as well. So um, he wants to hang out with Captain Feathersword. He's a, <laughs> he's a really fun guy. <laughs> oh, he seems like a riot. <laughs> oh, he actually yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Patty, Patty who's who's mm -hmm. the actor who plays Captain Feathersword, is uh, yeah, it's his bestie, my bestie on tour. So. <laughs> That's so awesome. No, I was with, I was in Nashville recently. I was actually uh, at the Ryman seeing Jason Isbell. And before he came on, my friend and I were like, we were talking about the OG Wiggle shows and we were like, they should come here. They should play at the Ryman. All <laughs> oh, right. Oh, we, yeah. oh, I, we have actually played the Ryman. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How was that? Was it? Oh, it was amazing because we're all, you know, like Anthony and I particularly uh, are country music fans. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's that's the, the home of the Grand Ole, you know, the previous yeah. home of the Opry and you know I've got friends here who, you know who sometimes say 
we'll post something on Facebook and say something about, oh, you know, wouldn't it be great to do the the the, the rhyme? And, and I was just quietly go, oh, we actually played the rhyme. <laughs> so we did it a There's few not times. many places they have played yeah, no, it's, that, I love, You know, that was one of the things I loved about touring the States is, you know, you mm-hmm. got to play in these like, iconic Mm. towns and and venues and um you know it was just it was just amazing yeah. the song movies played the five spot <laughs> yeah yeah we did a few I, yeah. Yeah. that's so yeah. awesome we are running out a little bit of time but i do have another question related to kind of venues touring i read actually i saw i was i read uh greg's book earlier in the summer too and i was kind of doing my, my wiggles uh deep dive and he said that you would often go after the shows in america you would just go see shows and he mentioned you saw wilco and you were on their tour bus yeah. and yeah. and i want to hear about more of those experiences because that that's the kind of person i am i will catch any time that i can to catch a live show I will go. So, any cool stories while you were on tour, kind of <laughs> after you were? You've been like that since the eighties, Bella. Yeah, yeah, I've been going to see, I've been going to see bands since um, nineteen seventy three. So, um, uh, you know, it's it, it's still my passion. I still do it a lot. Look, I, yeah, I saw lots of great stuff in in um in the states and and here over the years. Um, you know, uh, I saw Paul McCartney at at um at um Yankee Stadium. Um, uh. But uh, yeah, I saw all those bands. Like, look, I saw um, I saw Drive by by Truck as we were talking about earlier at, um, on Halloween in um, somewhere in New York, a club in New York. That oh, was, wow. that was really... So there was he lots of the Ramones. Was it the World Club? Or oh yeah, that, that was in yeah. The, wow. The place called... Where he got hooked. That was in that was in the eighties. I was in New York with a friend of mine. It was New Year's Eve, and we opened the Village Voice, and we saw that the Ramones were playing on New Year's Eve. So we just went, oh, yeah, we got to get tickets. They got so, so excited. Yeah, but um, yeah. Just, I've yeah, seen lo- lots of stuff. It's okay. a bit hard off the top of my head. But yeah, he's seen everything. <laughs> do you go a lot? Do you go to a lot of shows too? I look. At, there's this sort of informal thing in Sydney where it's like if Murray's not there, the show's not high caliber enough. That's not true because we're on tour a lot and he misses mm-hmm. out on a lot. But people notice when he turns up and they're like, "Oh, I got a visit from the bus today." <laughs> um, yeah, we met. We met going to shows, so and I, I remember one in particular. There's a band in Australia called the Sunny Boys, which were an incredible band all through the '80s, and it was one of those bands that they said that you would never see live because they had broken up and there'd been such a long gap. You know, was it twenty year gap yeah. maybe? Um, but then they reformed, and basically people were flying from all over the country to go to the Enmore Theatre, which is mm-hmm. right where Mo lives, um, to see the Sunny Boys and. Most people cried at some time during the evening because they couldn't believe what they were hearing and seeing. And mm-hmm. anyone who was in the room that night was sort of bonded by this really powerful love for live music. And Murray and I were both there that night. It was just like, oh, my God. People were walking around holding their heads and just going <laughs> like this, you know. So, you know, it was many, many years of seeing Murray, the tall people, wave across <laughs> the room, you know? Like oh yes, there's another one. But yeah, I I live behind one of the big sort of venues in in Sydney, and so I know all the people there. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. You know, every now and then, if I if I haven't got tickets for something, I, I just see the people yeah. on the door and say, "Can hey, I just go in?" And have they know it, it's his backyard. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. That's so yeah. awesome. Well, thank you guys both so much for coming on. The Soul Movers got a new album come out, Dumb Luck, and then also talking a lot about the Wiggles, uh, Amazon Prime, Hot Potato, Story of the Wiggles documentary. Highly recommend. This has just been a total like dream come true. Like three-year-old Bella right now is, is shaking. Like I can't oh, believe Bella? it. No, do you mind? Can, can we do a, a, a can we pose for a picture? Can we can we do the finger guns? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right, thank you guys so much. <laughs> You're welcome, Bella. Lovely yeah. talk. This is my night. It's so great talking and to you guys. Keep wiggling. Keep wiggling. Happy wiggling. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.